Terry Jameson was a firefighter with the town of Oakville, and he lost his battle 10 years ago as well, and uh, his passing uh, was uh, something that was beneficial to uh, many people as well. Now, the mayor had wished that she would be here today. She's very uh, much aware of these issues and uh, very supportive of this cause. She had to be uh, in downtown Toronto today uh, dealing with issues related to uh, another health issue, the smog that we face uh, all around us. And she wanted me to pass on her warmest <coughs> greetings to George and to his team and tell them, tell them how proud she is and our council is of their efforts. Now the goal of George's trek across Canada, my understanding is I spend a lot of time reading it material on the website and reading, uh, reading press clippings, is to raise awareness. And he certainly did that in a very personal way for me. Because for, for all of my life, I've heard of organ donations and I've heard about the miraculous stories on television, reading them in newspapers, and, but I'd never really given it a lot of thought. I know a couple years ago when Ontario implemented the new health card system and my wife and I were at the uh, health card office and she said, well, why don't you sign the donation thing? And I just said, oh, I, I. And I, I, I really never thought of what it would mean. What, something so easy, so simple for somebody to do means so much. When you look at the, when you look at the benefit, when you look at how, when you look at how uh, Gabriel's father is living on in, in three people who wouldn't have otherwise lived, and in 32 people who benefited from, from that contribution, a simple signature, a simple discussion with your loved ones to say, this is what I want to have happen, is, is all that's necessary, and, and you can accomplish so much, even, in, even in, a, in a terrible, terrible tragedy or a terrible loss, you can accomplish so much. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I've actually made the decision myself, and I went to the internet, and I, I found the appropriate document to, uh, to do this, and, and as you are all my witness, I'm going to actually sign this document. I discussed it with my wife and uh, with my family, and uh, I'm going to send this in right away. And uh, George, you're responsible. Your response? There are so many competing interests for our attention in healthcare and in our society, whether it's cancer or AIDS or the myriad of other very important issues, that this one just, you know, sometimes I think things fall between the cracks, and they shouldn't, especially one that is so simple. And so I urge. I would imagine most of you who are here supporting George have already done this, but the people through the Beaver, the Oakville Beaver and the Oakville Today and CHCH that are here and, and your friends and your neighbors, go out and tell them how simple this is. What a simple act, a selfless act to save lives they can accomplish with the simple two-second action of, of signing on the dotted line. We're all here today in the town of Oakville to honor George and his team and his amazing accomplishments. We're here to honor uh, loved ones that are not with us any longer. And we at the town of Oakville, the whole town council, the staff of the town, Michael Brennan, the manager of this wonderful center, we all want to pass on our, our most profound appreciation for your efforts, our gratitude for your for your cause, for the potential of saving the life of the lives of even potentially one of us. We want to thank you for that. We want to welcome you to Oakville. We want to welcome Sean back to Oakville. We understand the uh, native son of our fine town. And uh, you let us know what we can do to help in the future. And we're going to be there. We're going to promote your cause with any way we possibly can. Thank you, George, and welcome. Our next honor guest to speak is the organizer of today's event, and mother to the person George had, has dedicated this day after. Please welcome Debbie Blagojevich. Another family may be going 
going through what we did two years ago today when i think back i don't think of my son being operated on for his organs and tissue i think of the respect and compassion the surgeons and nurses had for our michael and our family that day also the recipient families i can see them praying for our son and our family's grieving what they don't think of that at that time is how much our family was praying for them that the surgery was successful and the recipients live a long healthy happy life what makes us happiest is knowing our son still lives on through his daughter gabrielle and in many others i am proud oops sorry today is to promote awareness for organ and tissue donation what society doesn't realize about signing their donor cards is unless your family and loved ones are, are aware of their wishes in the event of their death, the ultimate decision is up to the family. We were so blessed to have known Michael. We are all gathered together today, all wanting to support both organ donation, and the fact is only 1 to 2 percent of people who die in hospitals can actually the odds are so much greater that one day you or a loved one may need a transplant before ever becoming a donor. Michael was out partying at the sport bar one night. We have a voicemail message, him calling our home to make his plans with Gabrielle and for her mommy for Father's Day. He was so happy and excited about the next day. He took a terrible fall in his home and that is what brought us here today. Uh, Michael has shared with so many others, we as a society love life, especially new life. Now, when I think of dying and not being able to become an organ donor, at least six people die with me, and organ donations affect any age. A newborn can be born with a damaged heart, I met a 12-year-old last year going to Disney World, Gemma. If you are out there, Gemma, I pray you get your heart double lung transplant or that you received it and are doing wonderfully. I am proud to say that since Michael's death, I have met some very special people of whom are on the transplant waiting list. Some have been listed for up to three, you know, three or more years practically bedridden and on oxygen 24 hours, seven days a week. They have been there for me, giving me support for the loss of our son, and here they are dying. I can't thank all of you enough on their behalf for believing in organ donation. I have always spoke openly about Michael's untimely death, but more importantly, I am so proud of him. Having saved three people's lives, 29 others with the gift of life and tissue. Michael always told us that if anything ever happened to him, what good would his organs be in the ground? He felt so strongly about this. What led us to our discussion about organ donation? First of all, Michael found a story in the Oakville Beaver newspaper about six years ago. A friend of his that he played hockey with growing up. They had lost touch, sadly, but his friend, also named Mike, had gone through voluntary blood testing at the University of Toronto while attending school and was amazed at being a perfect bone marrow match with a young mother of three children in Manitoba. She had terminal cancer and Mike saved her life. Mike Schrank is here today and I want to thank you very much for what you did. sharing it in our newspaper because it opened the door for our first discussion with our mic. I am so proud of you as I know your parents are as well. Secondly, one year before Michael passed away, he had fractured his wrist and come to find our family doctor's wife was a living donor to their young son who desperately needed a kidney transplant. Dr. Terence De Silva is also going to share with us today his family story. 
Now I have to tell you how I met George Marcello on January 2nd of this year. I was going through websites to do with organ donation. I had an incredible need to find out what was going on in our country to do with this topic. I wanted to get involved and to do my share of helping to get the word out. I still can't believe it when I think of how I met George. I stumbled across his site step by step. The only thing that really caught my eye was the date, June 20th, 2000. A year and a half after we lost our son, I find out that this gentleman started a 769 day walk through Canada to promote organ donor awareness. That being the same day that Michael passed away. I was so shocked, I emailed George and told him all about my son passing and uh, that he passed the very same day that George began his walk in Toronto and that Michael gave the gift of life and tissue to 32 people. I had to congratulate him on what he was doing. I was so proud of George, him being a liver recipient himself, showing the world how grateful he is for his donor family that he's walking across our country encouraging hundreds of thousands of Canadians to sign their donor cards. George was so inspired by my email that he asked if he could come to Oakville to honor our son Michael and if he could name this 731st day Michael's day of his 769 day walk. You can all only imagine how I felt to have this opportunity to honor Michael for his incredible gift and to, uh, and to be able to share it with the town he was raised in. I'd also like to welcome Charles Gibbs of Ward Funeral Home. He is also a guest speaker today. Very unusual, you may think, but Charlie has become a special friend of ours. We've unfortunately had few dealings with the loss of our special family members. My husband lost his entire family, dad, two brothers, and mother in a matter of eight years, and then our son three years later. Charlie asked me if he could thank me after the funeral was over. That because that because of our generous decision, he may receive the liver transplant he needed to live sooner rather than later. I couldn't believe my ears. He showed me his beeper and was praying every day for his call. We were proud to put in Michael's obituary that we donated his organs to the Moore program. Scott Skinner is here today, and I'd like to thank him and more for all their compassion. If I had any questions, Scott was right there for me. Where are you, Scott? Thank you, Scott. I also met a very special young lady during my many stops organizing our walk, Lisa Jameson works for St. John's Ambulance. You won't believe it when you hear what she had to tell me when I happened in her office one day. God bless you and your family, Lisa. If I go on and on, no one else would have time to talk, but we have a very special presentation we'd like to make. Most importantly, I have to say I am in awe of all of those that dedicate their lives to helping those in critical need. God bless all of you. The very first thing I thought of when George offered us this great opportunity was to thank the paramedics that revived Michael on that tragic night. We realize it is their job to help those in trouble, but it has always meant so much to me for you to know how I feel. Thanks is not enough. My husband, Michael's daughter, Gabrielle, and I both want to honor the paramedics that tried so desperately to save her daddy and our son. Murray Brennan and Graham Bates because of your gallant efforts, Michael's wish came true. He was so proud of Mrs. De Silva and his friend Mike Shrank. I still hear him saying to me, isn't that so cool, Mom? He knew if anything ever happened to him, he wanted to be proud of himself. It's
it is so comforting to know you gave him such good care. It looked like he was sound asleep when we arrived at the hospital. At the time we arrived, the furthest thing from our minds was whether or not Mike could be an organ donor. Two and a half oh, days later, you, knowing how strongly Michael felt has led us to this day and it has helped us so much to deal with his body and soul being gone in our lives, but we do know his spirit is with us forever. We believe with all of our hearts, if it wasn't for you, Michael, if it wasn't for you, Michael would not have become an organ and tissue donor. Thank you, thank you again for making Michael's wish come true. days left to live I wouldn't be around here today unless somebody made that donation and whatever I had to do walk across Canada or fly to the moon or whatever I think it's really great being alive uh, I, I, I wanted people during this walk I wanted people I wanted the attention to go to where it was truly deserved and that was to those people that passed away and made that incredible decision uh, so that my life and five others in my case were saved, but in, in other cases where there's been a tremendous amount of lives saved and a tremendous amount of individuals who have had their lives restored, eyesight, people can walk again, people have serious uh, skin uh, burns are restored. There's, just it goes on and on and on this these are the people where the attention should be given these are our true heroes and the deputy uh, acting dep or acting mayor is he still here okay uh, you 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 made the mistake of asking me uh, well what what can we do anything that the council can do uh, let, let us know I want to Put you on the spot right now. Okay. <laughs> what we want to do today is have you bring to council that we recognize today as Michael and Terry's day on June 20th. And we're hoping that you could bring that to council and we're hoping that can get passed. You, I will you, do that, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and just to that end, George, I would love it if, if uh, your your supporters and, and the, the family of Michael can come to council to bring their story to my colleagues and through the, to the public through the power of the television to bring that very important story forward because it's very powerful and we need to make sure that the entire community hears it. Very good. Um, and and I uh, especially want to thank uh, Debbie. Uh, who, you know, she recounted the story how we met on the you know after her viewing the website and all that. And uh, I mean, as soon as as soon as uh, I heard about that, like automatically, you know, I had goosebumps and all kinds of stuff. And I had you know, and and after talking to Debbie. 
I, well, I found out even after our first talk that Debbie's very persuasive. <laughs> and she likes to get her way. <laughs> and, and I couldn't have it any other way, you know, like to, to, for, for today to honor Michael. And, and, and all the things that Debbie did uh, in, in making this a beautiful day today, uh, somebody quoted that today is a day of love. You know, and that's how we're going to remember today. It's a day of love. You know, there's so many people that took part in this and, and that, you know, with, with a passion, we're all trying to do something. We're trying to, we're trying to honor something beautiful that was done and everybody took their part in it. And, and it, it, it's going great. And I'm, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll be able to, to further this message throughout our country. Because as you well know, there is about 4,000 people that are presently on the waiting list. And this includes a lot of men, women, and children. Uh, a lot of children that are on the waiting list. And, and those individuals and the families are going through a desperate time. They, they, they don't know how much longer their, their, their loved ones have. And you know they're going through a very desperate time. And here's what we can do. Um, as I travel through Canada, I talked to a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I must have regurgitated my message millions and millions of times over and over and over and over again. And what I found out was two things. First of all, every single person I've talked to, 99.9% .9 want to donate their organs. And I've talked to millions of people. They want to donate. They have a willingness to do that. They want to do it. And yet, we're suffering as having the lowest rate in our country. There's a lot of organs going to waste. So there's something wrong with this picture. People want to donate their organs. Uh, the message is getting out. You know, uh, sign your card and make sure you express this wish to your family because the family's going to make the final decision. Something's not happening here. And, and I think what we seriously need to look at is what can we do to possibly maybe improve our system? We've been up operating under a system called family consent. And it, it, it takes a very courageous few that will be able to, to support at that moment, because as the good doctor described, it is a very difficult moment when you're approaching the family at that moment, and it takes an incredible amount of courage and, and, and it, it doesn't happen to all the families where they're able to say yes. You know, and as a result, we have organs that are going underground. And, and that person wanted to donate their organs, and then the family afterwards lived with, with a lot of anger and regret because they don't get a second shot at it. Plus, we live in a country where Canadians are very busy with their lives. Even though they have the willingness and desire to, to make this donation, Sometimes they don't get around to doing it. They don't get around to signing that card. They don't get around to uh, uh, expressing this wish to their family. The solution is simple. We can do what other countries have been doing, and they've been showing a remarkable, uh, a remarkable success in their countries. They use a system called precious consent. What they did was, after finding out that their country overwhelmingly supported the idea, they registered everybody on a data bank. And those people that didn't want to be on that data bank could take their names off. That way there was no missed opportunities because what we have to look, we all, we all know what the precious gifts of life is when somebody makes that donation. We know how many, how many in a positive way, how many people are getting affected, lives are getting saved, individuals, uh, uh, tissues are getting restored, families are overjoyed because their loved ones are, are getting saved, friends of those loved ones are overjoyed because they're good. You know, one decision saves over, or positively affects over a thousand people. We know that this works and it's a cure. People that receive organs are living very healthy lives. They become productive members of society. They, they, they are no longer reliant on machines. So we know that this works. Why not maximize the situation? have a data bank where everybody could be registered, we wouldn't have any missed opportunities. None. We have to maximize this. There's 4,000 people that are on the waiting list, and it, we can look at it like people on the Twin Towers. I mean, everybody did everything they possibly could to make sure that those people were going to get saved. We have to have that same perception and not look in our country 
to, to make sure that we're doing everything possible to give those 4,000 people a better chance to survive. And that's what we're hoping to do after I finish this walk. Uh, we're, we're going to be campaigning very hard to try and pass legislation. So uh, we're going to be revisiting all the communities we've gone through. If we have to put a petition together, I'm confident we can get millions of signatures that are going to support this. So, uh, you know, it doesn't stop here. It doesn't stop today. You know, this, this is something that we have to keep working at and we have to make sure that we're going, Canada's going to rise from the bottom to the top where we belong. And, and uh, I know that everybody is, is passionate about, his, about this, that came here today and together we can make a difference. I want to uh, also acknowledge Sean who, who uh, uh, came out to be my road manager when I was, his, uh, when I was in Quebec and I had nobody, and he agreed to come out, and it wasn't, well, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> it. When you don't know how to speak French, it's hard, but you know what, we, we, we did, Sean did an incredible job coming out there, he did it on behalf of, because he lost his best friend, and, and uh, I'll tell you, I was with this guy every day, and he put every ounce of his, his passion and, and his work towards it, and I want to thank Sean for coming out and, and helping out during that time. Thank you, Sean. I also want to thank Source of Sports. Uh, this is Jennifer Wilson here. She's the assistant marketing person. Uh, they've also been helping out as our only corporate sponsor. We pretty well did this on a zero budget. And I, I guess we can show people that if you, if you just, well, maybe you got to be a little bit insane, but if you just put enough hard work into anything, you can make it happen, even if you've got no dough, you know? And so, uh, but I do want to thank Source of Sports for helping out. Once again, to Debbie, Butch, uh, all the family and all the friends here, thank you for making this a special day for me today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I, was, um, I feel very privileged and honored to be asked to say a few words on today's very special occasion. I have known the Corbett family for a very long time, but uh, when the issues with regards to organ transplantation came up, as is often the case, there was a lot of thinking, reflecting, contemplating as to the decisions and uh, the, s the emotions that would be involved. And, uh, as a physician, this is something that has happened very, very frequently. We get young people who die accidentally, perhaps, and uh, there's the issue of should we suggest organ transplantation? At the time when someone passes on, it is very difficult to re to sort of broach this subject with the, with the surviving members. This being the case, I have tried in my very small way to try it have people be very aware of what this whole situation is about. So if there is some kind of a decision which were to be reached with the family, something even as simple and as small as signing the organ donation card, yeah. keep it, keeping it with your wallet or keeping it in a place which can be found easily, it will make life so much simpler for the surviving members of the family. In my particular case, um, Approximately three years ago, I, I have four children, and my second child, Jonathan, who was at that time uh, 18, he was born with a kidney impairment and subsequently went on to develop frank kidney failure. And uh, he was just starting university at the time, and we were at crossroads as to whether, in fact, he would be allowed to proceed with his uh, university studies because of the intense. Uh, schedules for the uh, dialysis uh, that he would have to undergo. At that point, my wife and I decided, uh, well, what should we do? What are the options? And we had a little chat with pe the people at Toronto and uh, subsequently came to the decision that probably the best thing would be to look at the possibility of a live 
fault of the donor. And uh, then, of course, the question came, should it be me or should it be my wife? But I guess guys most often are kind of the little chicken, so I found every excuse to sort of back off a little bit, but my wife stoically stood her ground and said, this is what she was going to do. And subsequently, after all the cross-matching and testing and whatever else was done, the procedure was carried out in uh, June, and uh, three years later, Jonathan is a very normal, very average child, doing everything that a normal 21-year-old 21, 21 should be doing, and perhaps more. I, I tend to think he's trying to make up for his lost time. <laughs> anyway, um, the, 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 the purpose of my coming to address you this afternoon is just to try and make a little plug to uh, think about organ, organ donation, which is a very, very viable option. A lot of people would be very, very grateful. A lot of people would be very, very thankful. And uh, the person who passes on, the family that survives, see in this one life that has gone many other lives that have had a very good chance to live what would otherwise be a rather hopeless event. Thank you very much. First, I would like to thank Debbie for inviting me to participate in this event. We raise public awareness about the shortage and benefit of our We are also here to honor her late son, Michael, who donated his organs which saved the lives of three people and enriched the lives of many others. Debbie, her husband, Butch, and other donor families are truly very special people. For at the time of their sorrow, trying to come to terms with the loss of their loved ones, they have taken the time to think of others that are in need of an organ transplant and have done something about it. Approximately 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with primary school stroke myocarditis, which is a chronic liver disease that causes destruction of fibrosis of the bowel duct and is complicated with recurrent episodes of bacteria and infections of the bowel duct. In the final stages of liver failure, I was placed on a waiting list for organ transplant in 1998. After a two-year wait, I received a call on October 14, 2000, from the local organ computer exchange program, known as the Moore program, advising that a match had been found and to report to Toronto General Hospital for transplantation. If I had not received my transplant when I did, I would not be alive today. Today, my liver transplantation is thoroughly successful with no health rejection. There is not a day that goes by that I don't think about my donor family and medical system. The greatest gift that one can give or receive from this earth is a gift of life. A gift of life received from an unknown donor is given to an unknown recipient. Shows incredible respect. To the general public, I would encourage and strongly recommend that you become part of this movement towards organ and tissue donations. The first step is by signing your donor card. Second, which is of equally importance in my opinion, is to let this decision be known to those close to you so that your wishes to be an organ and tissue donor are carried out. It is important to discuss this decision and the reason why with your next kid, except your, if you will, your doctor, or whoever you have designated as the person responsible for your body after death. Some people ask how organ donations affects the funeral arrangements. You know, I've been a director of that as stated in one of the more program brochures, and as a funeral director, I can verify that organ and tissue don donations did not interfere with having an open casket at a visitation or at the funeral. However, it may influence the timing of any visitation or memorial service. Finally, to George, my deepest gratitude and thanks. Your work at Robin the government to create a national registry for organ and tissue donations and your determined effort to raise public awareness about critical organ and tissue 
shortage that exists is truly admirable. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm not here today to speak about the benefits of organ donation. I believe the benefits are quite clear already. I'm only here to tell my family's story in hopes that it might somehow convince one more person to sign their organ donor card. My father, Terry Jameson, was no full firefighter. On any given day, sorry. On any given day, he was expected to be ready to respond to the scene of an accident, rush to a medical emergency, or battle a fire in two. On June 20th, 1992, my father fought the battle for his life and lost. Ten years ago today, my father died from complications resulting from a brain aneurysm. He was just 39 years old. Organ donation was a topic that my mom and dad had discussed. I can hear my mom over there. <laughs> Never dreaming that... Oh yeah, I'm fine. Never dreaming that their conversation would have to be remembered so soon. My father stood firm on the subject. Take whatever was needed and whatever was necessary. It was very typical of my dad. He was always the first person to help out a friend or family member in the time of need, and it just seemed fitting that even in his death he was helping others. I would like to take a moment now to read you two letters. The first letter was received by my mom from the Moore Foundation. Dear Mrs. Jameson, on behalf of the Moore program, I would like to thank you for allowing your husband, Terry, to become an organ donor. Your decision has helped the two people who received Terry's kidneys. Also, as a result of your decision, a person suffering from a terminal heart ailment has received a heart transplant. A person suffering from a terminal liver disease has received a liver transplant. A person suffering from a terminal respiratory ailment has received a lung transplant. Terry's corneas will be used for future corneal transplantation to restore the sight of blind patients. As well, Terry's pancreas will be used in future islet cell transplantation to help free diabetic patients from insulin dependence. This marks the beginning of a new life for these recipients, a life free from the medical, social, and financial restrictions of their illnesses. This would not have been possible without your thoughtful consideration. I hope their grief is softened by the knowledge that you and your family have helped to extend and improve the life of others. Sincerely, Carl J. Cardella, Medical Director. The second letter came to us through the Moore Foundation. It was written by a donor recipient's wife to thank us for giving her, her husband a new lease on life. This one's a little tougher. <laughs> Dear friends, it is with the most heartfelt gratitude that our family writes to you today. You have given us to us the greatest gift for which we will be eternally grateful. My husband, who is 59 years old, was stricken with a massive coronary attack four and a half years ago, and since that time has had a very limited life. He is the father of five grown children and the grandfather of four delightful boys. They were very active in our community and sports field, participating and coaching young people. He has an outgoing and caring personality and was very highly and is very highly respected. One of our sons was was able to be with us on the day of the transplant. As we were driving back to the apartment after seeing my husband for the first time after surgery in complete awe and thankfulness for the miracle of new life which we had just been given to us all, my son said with much emotion, Mom, we are so fortunate and happy on the beginning for Dad on this Father's Day, but to think that somewhere there is a family that is grieving sad with the loss of the father and loved one. I was so overcome with emotion as this too had been much in my thoughts and prayers. My husband is doing very well in his rehabilitation and gift of a new beginning. We thank you so much for caring and concern for donor awareness. We are still working towards these goals in the future. May God bless all of you in the years to come. Sincerely, a grateful recipient and family. Although the, although the wounds of losing my father will never heal, I can find some comfort in knowing that my father's selflessness and willingness to help others has saved countless lives and improved the quality of life for many others. We 
We are all potential donors, just as we are all potential recipients. Life is unpredictable and you never know what the future may hold. Please make sure that your family and friends are aware of your wishes and please sign your donor card. I'd like to thank Debbie for allowing me to fumble my way through this today. And to thank George for making this such an important matter and making sure that everybody's aware. Thank you. All of Debbie and Butch's friends for being here today and supporting them through such a difficult time in their lives. They wouldn't have been where they are today if it wasn't for all of you. Debbie has worked incredibly hard on organizing Michael's Day in Oakville, and I want to thank all those that gave her a helping hand along the way, and everybody that scrambled cutting fruits and picking up all the last minute things that took hours instead of minutes. I'd like to welcome once again Debbie Bogoyevich to say her final thank yous. Okay, first of all, Butch and I are so excited that Al's Cartage of Kitchener provided us with that incredible tractor trailer for our walk. Talk about getting the word out. That sure did it. Step by step would I'd like to thank Sheridan College for creating our posters and providing copies that are posted all over Oakville today. And OTMH for the great send-off they gave us and a light lunch. Trafalgar Village for being our first stop and of course Kevin's No Frills was so generous with his fresh fruits and refreshments. What a heart of gold that man has. Oakville Place provided us with the kiosk to promote organ and tissue donation and we'd also like to thank Longo's Fruit Market, Rava Fine Foods, Dominion at Upper Oakville Mall, Tim Hortons for all of the replenishing refreshments and there's tons of cake there so everybody better eat it. Sheridan College our third stop Susan Atkinson and Julie Poslins, they were such a great help to me. I couldn't have done it without them. Chris at Corbett Sports, he's with Source for Sports now. He had a tent set up and donated cases and cases of water. Thank you so much. Iroquois Ridge Community Center, what a wonderful spot for our finish of such a great day spiritually. Thank you, Michael Brennan, and your staff for their generous help. We'd also like to thank the Oakville Police Department, Fire Department, EMS Services, St. John's Ambulance, the Canadian Blood Services for providing a blood typing clinic in the atrium, and of course, Mary Stevens for the great tour of the Lions Foundation Guide Dog School earlier today. John Harmer, He's here creating a very special memory by videotaping Michael's day. We will all have something to treasure forever. forever. Thank you so much. Refreshments are available. Please grab something. And thank you again, everybody. God bless. Fred got the shit. Look at the camera, George. I have. It's Michael's day today. That's right.
get paid by the K here? What's that? Get paid by the kilometer or? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want that much money. It's interesting. Gabrielle's so excited. Yeah, I, know. Uh, I, hope, I hope both of them get the on TV. Sorry? How long does she get to carry the torch? All the way through. Oh, does she? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, it's your show. I don't, yes. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, hi. Hi. Thank you. Well, you're calling all the shots. Whatever, whatever you want. I figure we could pass it to these people too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. If I want. Uh, you know what you could do? You could start to calling it. people to go up front. Okay. You know, to keep the torch up front, just have people run to the front and carry it for them. We we managed to do that with uh, a thousand kids. Well, that's so what I want you to do. It, yeah. It. Because by the time we. He's carrying the torch high and proud. And what else did you notice, uh, Butch? Well, now that John's not carrying it, but what, she what was have to smell his armpit. And, yeah, and that's one of the oh, challenges. Yeah, there, there we go, go again. Oh, see, there they go. That's Look, another challenge. We that, uh, Gabrielle's going to get tired of she, smelling She didn't armpit. know that she was going to have to <laughs> go through uh, cruel, un unusual punishment here. I guess. Maybe <laughs> walking down past Home Depot, crossing the road. Yep. Hey, there's our truck. So when was the last time you talked to Elaine? Uh, probably three days ago. Three days ago? I've been so busy, I haven't been able to get on the computer to catch her online or anything. She's a gift, eh? Oh, she's a treasure. I love her so much. Yeah. I wish so much she could have been here. Yeah, we were trying, but she can't, she can't travel. I know, because of her, of her condition. blood pressure. Yeah. I don't know so. <laughs> you guys are long gone by <laughs> And this is the escort that we got today. We've got two on bikes. We got two on bikes. One there. One car. Someone back there. We'll get them later. We got the Oakville Fire Department. CH News. The ambulance. Organization. Oh, that that truck's probably a few times already. And, yep, yep. Know all about them. They joined us a few times. Yeah. Comment from Sean. Okay, Sean's the good-looking escort.
Okay, let's head this way. <laughs> yeah, he's lying down. Okay. One more. One more. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you. You're welcome. That's the first time I've held one of those. I hope oh, really? it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. Well, I want to walk back down here to get the car to go back and get my car. Uh, so we're only a couple of kilometers away from the rec center, right? Oh, it's well, just there's... one kilometer? Yeah. Okay. We're actually walking well, away from it right now. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what she's doing there. Yeah, there's some school kids there. school here. kids, okay. Oh, yeah. Gabrielle. I saw her drive up. Yeah. I was going back to talk to her.
Could there be an adult to accompany this work?
I'm just thinking it? Yeah, but if I can let you right now, just take yeah, that out of the way. Yeah, no problem. Of course, I'm undertaking to walk the next 12,000 kilometers in the next 500 days. But let me tell you, this is in gratitude for the, the precious gift that I got. And uh, this torch is, is going to be representing what we're doing here. It's going to be passed throughout all the 491 towns and cities that we're going to be going across in the next 527 days. Thousands, thousands of high-profile athletes, celebrities, politicians, men, women, taxi drivers, housewives, people on the waiting list, donor families, are all going to participate in carrying this. The campaign will also raise money for our Olympic athletes. It will span Canada. It will visit 463 communities before it ends in 500 days from today. I'm going to ask you to hold this torch with George to pass on to Pauline, and then, if you may, I'll light the torch, okay? to George. Um, I think George is amazing. He had a vision and a belief and he had faith and he put it all together and brought people together from all over the country and enough money to do it and had determination and sometimes when you have a vision and faith like that you get it done even without a big plan beforehand. And we're all here in all the media because of George and uh, two years ago in Hyde Park uh, who would have known that it would have been this successful and I think we should all give a huge Round of applause to George personally. And when I was uh, growing up, my friend Stuart Lockwood, who was my best friend, uh, was very sick. He had a uh, genetic kidney disease, and he got a kidney transplant from uh, his father, uh, the reverse. Uh, his father helped him out. We around and we make plans to go to the beach. We go here. How about taking a little bit of time making a plan for the future, for the future for somebody else? And that's what I'm going to do. I'm signing my donor card. And what I'm doing here, I want to help George create awareness. It's a very important thing. We shouldn't have 4,000 people waiting for us. This young fellow here waited 12 years. Shouldn't have to wait 12 years. So I'm just helping to create awareness, and if I can help, all the better for George, and I'm, I'm glad to be here and be part of this. I just want to leave you with this little message. May you live a hundred years, and that's for sure. On June 20th, 2000, supporting George and giving him his send-off, my son was in the hospital, ready to be transported to Toronto General Hospital 
to give the gift of life and tissue. My name is Debbie. I am a donor mom. I have the incredible honor of telling you how I met George Marcello. Well, I discovered Step by Step's website on January 2nd, 2002, when I was surfing the net to find out what was going on in the organ transplant world. His final wish come true. Mayor Mel Lastman was presenting George to make our, or to presenting George with the torch of light to start his walk. I emailed Elaine, George's assistant, to tell her of our amazing coincidence. The very same day George started his walk a year and a half ago, my son Michael, at 26, ended up brain dead from a serious fall in his home. I couldn't believe George was still out there fighting the winter elements. He was so inspired by my email, George asked if he could come to our community to honor our son Michael on the second anniversary of Step by Step's walk and Michael's gift of life and tissue to so many. I am proud to say Michael has given the gift of life and tissue to 32 people. So my husband being the great artist that he is, we are giving George a painting. And Debbie is going to unveil the painting for us. Newfoundland. I learned how to do sweats and uh, it's been a learning experience. You don't feel a sense of achievement? No, I, I don't. Everybody's been asking me that. Every, every television station that came up, you know, said, do you, you know, uh, do you feel like, and honestly, I don't. I don't, I feel like I only got the job half done, you know. Phase two has to kick in, man. Like, so the walk is just the beginning. The walk was just to plant the seeds across the country, to sprinkle out the seeds. And uh, phase two is going to make sure to nourish these seeds so that they can grow. And uh, I won't be finished until Canada rises from the bottom to the top. Then now I'm finished. It was on your camera that I said I was going to visit the Pope, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, many times. It was, yeah. And everybody kept saying not to say that, like that, you know, that you can't say something that didn't happen, right? But I had this little feeling it was going to happen, so I said it, and I kept saying it. So I'm going to keep saying this. In four years, Canada's going to rise from the bottom to the top. It might be an un unfortunate person to have a vision. And if you have a vision to try and get something done, something that's inside of you that, that you want to get done, you, you'll fall into two categories. When it gets too hard or it gets too, you'll just give up. But if you have a little bit of insanity in your life, then you might stick it through. So there's no other way to explain right now how I got this done except that I'm a little crazy. <laughs>